Hello, and welcome to another edition of Lost in Criterion. I'm one of your hosts, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and I'm joined by my co host, The Adam Glass. This week we are talking about David Lean's 1946 adaptation of the Charles Dickens classic. Great expectations. Oh, I was wondering if you were like, I forgot. <laughs> one of them. Maybe I forgot. No, um, this is, this is one of two. Means Dickens adaptations, and next week we'll be talking about the other uh, Oliver Twist. But this week we are focusing on Great Expectations. Um, David Lean, uh, very famous, one of the best British uh, directors ever. Uh, did a lot of great movies. Uh, I think like fourteen of his movies are on the British Film Institute's top hundred British movies. Um, I did not know but, that. Uh, That's amazing. He did. He did Lawrence of Arabia, which is really? one of my favorite movies. I did not yeah. know that. Um, yeah. So, uh, this is actually the first British film to win an Oscar for cinematography, um, which is kind of an arbitrary claim, but still very nice. But uh, it's interesting Oscars, because it deserves it. It's quite yeah. Yeah. lovely. Yeah, it really, it really does deserve it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is Great Expectations, and it's, it's weird, a little fun fact. We mentioned this at the end of the last episode. Uh, Pip is a ghost. David Lean claimed... Oh, sorry. Yes, Pip is a ghost. Pip, uh, <laughs> Pip was dead the whole time. Yeah, right? I, I'm sorry. Came, I was and, uh, trying to no, think of a stupid <laughs> twist that would ruin the book. Okay, obviously, <laughs> obviously, Great Expectations is a, a, a novel that in American schools, uh, we are really... A lot of American schools, it's required reading. Specifically um, for AP it is, English. Yeah, it is It is kind of a... Uh, a uh, so, a, Adam, did you read it from cover to cover in AP English? I... Of course I read it from cover to cover. We were not in the same class. Listen, I read most of it, and then later I read the Spark Notes. I would like to uh, say that because the way the plot unfolds and the fact that it's so long, I didn't really read any of it. Yeah. David David Lean, though, says he never read it at all. Totally uh, understandable. Just like Pat. It's it's interesting, though. Um, He obviously does not make a direct retelling. You know, he, he takes some shortcuts. He cuts out some minor characters. But it's understandable because a direct retelling of that book would be like yeah. a four Dickens, DVD box set. Yeah, Dickens was paid by the word. Yes, and it shows <laughs> it, very clear. You know, you know, in the first in the first five paragraphs of A Tale of Two Cities, there are six sentences. It's a page and a half <laughs> long. There are six sentences. Yes. Um. <laughs> so, so uh, Dickens Dickens was a very verbose person. And the the underlying plots, you know, he wanted to create, you know, he, he did it on purpose. He has really delightful turns of phrase, and the amount of description in what he does is amazing. Um, so, on on one level, putting it into a visual form, you don't need half of that. Right, you get, you're already... Because you're showing it. people, you're showing people, instead of instead of talking about it, you're seeing it. And and on the other half, there's a lot of superfluous uh, things going on. Things that don't necessarily... Why? There's a lot like, of things um, that you will get yeah. from somebody who gets paid by yeah. a word. Yeah, like Pip has Pip has a rival um, in the blacksmith shop that we don't mention at all in this. Um, and they end up getting... He like gets into a fight with Joe, I think. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, and you know, it's been it's been since high school that I read Great Expectations, assuming that I read the whole thing. In you high know, school. like I used um, to think but, I did, and then I'm, now I'm not sure. <laughs> but but it's it's what I would really call this one of the best, you know, book to movie adaptations that I've seen uh, in a long time. Yeah, and having um, possibly never read the book, I will say that. It is what I have come to understand being the story of Great Expectations. Yeah. I believe we may yeah. have even watched this in school or a newer Maybe version. Did. I'm Maybe. not 100% sure. Um, I really, honestly, I remember specifically in my, uh, in my English class, we watched bits of the... Uh, the newer one? It was... The newer one, Great Expectations. When Paltrow was in it. Oh, I think we did watch that one. Too. Um, yeah, because it, it was in color. Was it Ethan Hawke? Yeah, I think it was All Ethan Hawke. All I remember Hawk. is that, like, basically, I understood the story and yeah, what happened. It was nineteen ninety eight. That's all. Oh, it wasn't. That? Yeah, it was Ethan Hawke. Why do I always think? I think it was Keanu Reeves. It was Ethan <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Great Expectations would be awesome. 
<laughs> oh, it would be terrible. No, awesome. Uh, yeah. You're getting the wrong word, Adam. Lean really does a great job of condensing the story and still finding, you know, everything. There's a little bit at the end where the ending of Great Expectations is very bleak, um, but only yeah, in the original. Charles freaking Dickens. You know, Dickens actually Dickens actually took under consideration everyone thinking that it was bleak and rewrote an ending. Um, and the ending he rewrote, which gets appended to a lot of. You know, versions of the book, but at the same time, most literary critics, you know, will say, well, it wasn't originally there, and it, it changes, by changing the ending, it kind of changes the scene. I want to, I want to point out that, yeah. Adam, I'm making a jerk-off motion right now. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. With the term literary critics. Yeah, well, anyway, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. It's, it's important information, I think, to say okay. that... The, I just well, and I thought it was important yeah. information that I'm making a jerk off. Yeah, right yeah, now. that was really good. Um, the uh, anyway, the ending that he rewrote is very close to the ending that Lee uses here. It's it's not, and it's understandable yeah. for a movie. Yeah. Gosh, you don't want to. Yeah, it is. The movie builds towards this feeling that like yeah. things. It is are a slightly positive, slightly happier ending than originally. Um, in this in this version. Uh, Pip goes back to Miss Havisham's house as it's as it's being sold, and he's kind of you know exploring it and remembering things. Um, and he runs into Estella, and Estella is there, and she's uh, she talks about how you know it, she makes a slight allusion to her husband dying, um, and they they leave together. They sort of apologize to each other and leave together. Um, but but in the original, you know, she just gets married. And we see that her relationship is abusive, um, or at least not very happy. And that's the end of things, basically. <laughs> that's that's what happens. Um, or the original. Well, the, <laughs> not... <laughs> the it's, kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to call it the original when it was, you know, changed by the author. Very, very short. Right, exactly. After. And that, that's a yeah. thing, like, you know, yeah. to me, is that, like, when an author change, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, your Stanley Kubricks or something like that. Yeah. You know, every time they re release it, it sort of resets everything. Yeah. In that, like, you got to take what they think yeah. under consideration. Your Spielbergs, your. Uh... Yeah. Unfortunately, we go too far down that path of defending, and we get defending to, like, the George author. Lucas. We get to George Lucas. And, uh... Yeah. You well, know. yeah. Well, there's there's changing things because you want people to like yeah. your story, and then there's changing things because you're batshit insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it's funny you mentioned Kubrick because obviously uh, he's done a lot of a lot of book adaptations that were very good movies, but weren't very close to the book. Um, yeah. Whereas this is a very good movie and is is. You know. It's reasonably close to it's, the book yeah, from what I understand. It's more like it's more like a Harry Potter adaptation. They, you know, yeah, it's, the, it's your I average. Think the director needs yeah. some leeway yeah. in making it. Yeah, yeah. You get into this with the comic book films all the time. Yeah, where like people don't want to give the director enough leeway to make a movie. Yeah. Remember, you're making a movie now with comic book films. It's a little bit different because those are already set up in frames. Yeah. I mean, they're already set up kind of like a storyboard anyway. Yeah. But. When you're adapting a book, you gotta give the author or the director yeah. a little bit of leeway to make There's, a yeah. good movie. In both, in both comic books and and you know in, in regular books, if you will, um, there is enough information <laughs> yeah, that you books. obviously you obviously cannot just you make can't a show one. Yeah. You can't make a one for one adaptation because there's just too much happening, no matter what, you know? Yeah. And occasionally you'll get in trouble with series of books, like Harry Potter did, where one of the changes they made in the first movie made it so that, you know, stuff that happened further down in the books just didn't make sense. Um, or wouldn't have made sense if they if they hadn't stuck with that change in the film version. So the film films become a sort of different universe. 
But in this, you know, first off, it's a standalone book. You don't need to worry about it. But he doesn't, he doesn't establish this as a different universe. Everything that happens in the book and all of the emotions in the book and all of the, the plots of the book that are important, really. Yeah, they carry um, all the way through the that end. Aren't just, that aren't just fillers because we're writing for a... Uh, <laughs> serial a, magazine. A, a serial we're magazine. <laughs> um, uh, this is a cent per word, goddammit. <laughs> yes. Um... You know they're 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 great. They're they're useful changes, and they're changes that make the story more understandable in the way we're being presented. Well, and, and also make it a really good movie. Yeah, as a movie, if you if you don't know about the book at all, which I yeah. don't really, I don't remember yeah. a lot of what I did read, which was just snippets. I think enough to pass tests. Yes, it's it. It's a just a good movie with in the story it's interesting it's yeah. it makes for a good yeah. watch yeah it, it it certainly is more interesting than i remember the book being yeah well with dickens with dickens one problem you have is in his verbosity um you know serialized it's okay because you're reading like a chunk a month yeah or or a week or whatever you know you read you read five pages and then you get five pages later Right, um, and you, and the you problem, sort of mentally delete the yeah. things that are irrelevant anyway. Yeah. Whereas, whereas when you sit it, you sit down and you read <laughs> and you it as a, a novel, a book, that, <laughs> a book that could literally like yes, use to you, anchor a boat. Yes. When you give, when you give a teenager, a child, a a yeah, book a, a that person is, who is not fully mentally developed yes, yet. Yes, a book that long, it's it's boring in the middle. It is boring, and you know, even even in Dickens' exciting stories. You know, and not that this isn't an exciting story, but it's more, it's more of a, this is a lot characterization. Um, it's, it's, you know, kind of a brooding thing for a lot of this. Um, but even in stories like, like A Tale of Two Cities, where, you know, there's a lot of action, there's a lot of things going yeah. on, and, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of moral arguments, but there's still, you know, it's, there's, there's lives on the line. Yeah. <laughs> there's excitement going on. But even that's incredibly long and incredibly boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's... the first yeah, the first sentence is a masterful piece of you know, dressing, of, of setting things up. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, but that's all anyone remembers because that sentence goes on for twelve more lines with semicolons. Yeah, and, and there's everywhere. a reason why Dickens books make great <laughs> films. He typically from what I know of what I actually have read. The stories are interesting. They're just hard to read. But they play very well in film. This is a very good example of a very good film. Taking the basic story. The basic characters. And making something that moves and doesn't take 45 yeah. hours to do. Yeah. And it's 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 amazing because I, I do remember Great Expectations enough to I say... I remember having... Or there is... A, have a shirt. Have that's a shirt. the only person I, I can't even say her yeah. name right anymore yeah. but that's the only character I remember there's enough there's enough in this movie that is directly you know verbatim from the novels from the adaptation that it really it works as you know like I said this is this is one of the best book to movie adaptations I've I've you know seen recently if not ever um, it's done very well, and David Lean is an amazing director. And you know, maybe maybe it's time to move on to that aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, stuff. like it's really hard to like. Yeah. This is one of those weird situations where we're talking about a film that yeah. is so good. It's like, well, um, yeah. what do we what do we nitpick about? Well, like, I mean, well, what minor problem do we not like? Well, no, let's start. Let's start with what's what's great. On um, you know, this won an Academy Award for cinematography, and the cinematography is amazing. Yes, um, it just is that, wonderful. That, that opening scene, we get we get you know this sort of melding of on location and in studio, and clearly in studio stuff. So we get you know we we follow Pip, or, or we get this pan across the the marshes and everything, and seamlessly we go into the church graveyard, which is very clearly the church's a rear production or projection. In the background, you know, it's obviously it's a set piece, yeah. Well, um, and you know, it kind of has to be, but at the same time, at the same time, it's still 
it, it's not it moves, disruptive though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not disruptive because it moves so smoothly from from the one to the other. And you know, we go we go back to the marshes, and you know, the marshes are 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 living, but the set pieces are are, are just as living. They're they're there. Um, one thing one thing this movie does very and it's very interesting that this does uh, is that there's um, there's a lot of sort of establishment of what are going to become horror movie tropes, and, and it does it in great expectations. Um, mag witches, the 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 criminals reveal at the very beginning in the in the cemetery. We've got this this barren marshland, then a cemetery, and you know it's it's meant to be a scary thing. But but in the book. We've got Pip's first person narration describing the environment so deeply that there's not a punch when Magwitch grabs him. Right. And in the movie we there's, get that yeah, there punch. is. And and it's it's a it's a it's a jump. It, it really is. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's startling. Yeah, it's a startling jump. Um, even you and, know it's coming, it's like Yeah. 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 <laughs> well and like and the way it's shot, like all those like opening that like that part, those scenes with him in the marsh are just really sort of terrifying. Yeah, they really like, are. I mean, like, you kind of got this kid just sort of walking through it, but, like, the way it's, like, silhouetted and everything is really disturbing. And it's good, and not in a bad way. I mean, it's, yeah, it's... Yeah, and, and actually, one, one really disturbing thing is, you know, he's got this, you know, Magwitch, you know, tells him, go get me food, um... That I've got one really crazy guy with me, even though that's a bluff, and it's wonderful. That <laughs> it's it's great, you know. It's, yeah. It's... Because the re- the reveal that that's a bluff comes after we meet the other guy, and you know that happens in the book too, and that's that's just a masterful piece of writing. That there really is another guy, but Magwitch doesn't know there's another guy, even though he's claiming there's another guy. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's and, actually and... and it's actually an enemy, not a friend. <laughs> but but as as what I'm what I'm getting at with the whole sort of you know, this further horror of the first few minutes, um, psychological sort of thing, you know, it gets you in the mindset of a, of a child, uh, in, in this environment when he, when he steals the, the pie from, uh, from his sister, um, and his sister hates him. It's so weird. Oh, it's so, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We won't yet. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's Dickens, Dickens, hatred of step parents is is very uh, very clear in many of his works but, yeah yeah this is anyway, not an isolated event yeah. anyway um so he uh you know he he gets the uh um he gets the the food the the drink and he sneaks back out and he's hearing voices in the wind telling calling him a, a thief uh and the, the which leaders. continues for the rest yeah. of the film and it's kind of interesting yeah. but also a little upsetting yeah. because I'm never quite sure if it's a real voice or yeah yeah and you and know I there's, don't know if there's that's on purpose or not there's points there's sure. points that do play with that because you yeah. know we're we're uh, at the very ending for instance you know he's he's thinking back to all these things that are happening you know of of Estella calling him in the first time you know telling him he can kiss her or whatnot um and we get these flashbacks, and then when he's in the room, the long the room with the long table, that last time, and and he he says to Stella as if he's startled to see her, you know, you're not really sure if he's seeing her or not until until she yeah, reacts, yeah. you know, and it plays it they, plays they with, that, play with that, and I yeah. think it's on purpose to mess with yeah. us, like yeah, where yeah, it it makes it really interesting. Yeah, he hears yeah. thief and stuff, and you kind of almost yeah. feel like is he being caught? Yeah. And the, the animals, there. the animals are talking, are are yelling at him, telling yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, that's really not interesting. To do it. I like that. It's, yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful because it's this. You know, he he knows what he's doing is wrong on some levels, or he suspects what he's doing is wrong. Um, even though it kind of works out for him. <laughs> but, well, yeah, but I mean, he, yeah, but he doesn't. He, yeah, I kind of wonder also if because like if is this like one of the first times that we see that thing because you do see that in other films still well i'm sure i'm I'm sure that didn't i don't think that was really an establishment of anything um it's an interesting idea 
It but is, as, late as, as late as 46, I wouldn't movie. necessarily. No, but, it, but yeah. it's... I don't know. I don't know. I'd be just curious because it's it's interesting. I'd be like, I'd yeah. be curious to see if he copied that off of something else or if that was a brainchild of his own. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's. Uh, anyway. Sorry, I derailed. Yeah. You. No, no. I was just. I was. I was still thinking about the uh, the adaptation we watched in, and how how it's modernized. Yeah, the, the Ethan Hawke and Gwyneth Paltrow thing takes place in like New York City. It's, it's oh, very... we didn't watch that one in mine. We Maybe watched the didn't. color one, but it was huh. not. Um, it was still in Victorian England. Huh. Interesting. I don't know that. Eh, whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we had different so, teachers. What do you want? Yeah, we did. Um. So yeah. Um. But yeah, there's there's a lot of moments. Of the animals uh, just. I like that. The That's atmosphere, fun. the atmosphere of the first, the first, you know, twenty minutes or so, you know, and then the soldier, the soldiers show up, and we see yeah. the silhouettes, the silhouettes of the soldiers searching across the the marsh, and they're they're really incompetently chasing the prisoners in the marsh. Yeah. They, were, yeah, they were really bad at climbing fences and running through puddles. They were they were the worst at that. Um, but yeah, and. You know, it's, 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 it's tough, I think, at this point to, to talk about the story because the story is such a well-established, it's an adaptation and something right. that a lot of and, people and are familiar with. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to get something wrong. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but, you know, the, the movie is so integral, uh, you know, it's, it's an adaptation, such good adaptations that it's, it's hard to say I like, I like when this character does that, you know, like right, we've done exactly. a lot of the other movies. Because, well, yeah, but somebody yeah. else wrote it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not like it's not like David Lean created this whole ho- uh, whole cloth yeah. from his mind. But yeah. I mean, the way he does it is his style, yeah. and it's really you know, and you, it's enjoyable. And there's some yeah. other scenes like the way he portrays inside the the old house. Oh yeah, is and really that's, great. It's, yeah, that's a that's another a, thing. Have I can never say her name. Havisham. 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 I don't know. Yeah, is creepy. To yeah. just oh, she's meant to be, and yeah, that's, exactly. And he does know, a really good job. In the it, that's one of the few things I remember from reading it. Yeah, what parts I did is that she's creepy, and she's yeah. very creepy in this film. She is. She's very a very iconic character. Um, you and know, done well. And, that's what I mean. Yeah, and she is done well. Um, and that's another thing that this movie sort of you know calls forward to with horror movies is the the gothic, uh, dust covered, spider web covered, <laughs> shut yeah. up old house. And you know that's that's obviously that's that's not something that even Dickens. Uh, you know, oh yeah, first, that's his oldest. That's, that's basically that's an old storytelling, right? But, yeah, that's an old trope too. But uh, but, but yeah, this sort of this her have a sham as a witch to a certain extent, you know. Well, yeah, and it's really uh, neat great, to watch how yeah. extreme she takes it, right? Like they show yeah. us this table, and this table is just yeah. a nightmare in and of itself. Yeah. Yes, the the cake still sitting there. Yeah, 20, it's just twenty years on. Awful. <sighs> yeah, yeah, and you know, and and we go back years and years later, and the cake is still there, and she's still living her same life. And... That's one of the only things that bothered me about the film, and it's oh. not a huge deal because I understand what? the situation at the time, but there's no aging other than for Pip. Everybody yeah, you're else right. is frozen in time. That's Mrs. that's Heverson really doesn't age. Joe doesn't age. It's it's off putting. Um, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Does the same actress play Estrella as a little girl? As no no, she does is a, or they maybe it is and they did some makeup a little bit because they do look it, different. The the one who mind. the one who plays her as as a girl uh, looks far too old for the role. <laughs> Yeah, she looks okay. too old for Pip, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It is. It is played by separate people. Which is, yeah, yeah. So they. It was a bit of a casting, but yeah. you can also go with the boys aging different than girls, and she might be slightly older than him. I don't remember in the story. Yeah. yeah. Um. Although I vaguely remember them being basically on par. She was twenty. She was seventeen when this was made, whereas Pip was you like know, eight, <laughs> ten yeah. years old or something <laughs> like that. Maybe twelve yeah. at most. Um. But um. Yeah, but it just really was upsetting for me, especially Joe. 
Because Joe is established so early in the movie, and then to see Joe yeah. not change at all. Yeah, not get and, older and, and, at all. And Pip is... What like fifteen and they don't even, years older? Yeah, they don't like even that. try to. They don't even try to age him. Right, they don't put gray in his hair or anything. That was a little yeah. upsetting. At least, at least Magwitch, you know, has longer hair and and yeah. an eye patch. The next time we see, him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Magwitch is awesome. <laughs> yeah, best because character he, ever. And he flees to Australia, where he kidnaps a bunch of little girls at Hanging Rock, and. Right, okay, there, there we that, go. It's maybe that's all the answer. one big circle. That's our answer. Well, you know, I, yeah, he, he makes his fortune in Australia. He's, uh, he's actually, I really like his character. but Yeah, he's a great, he's and a like great character. And I Joe is a character, too. Yeah. Um, and I like the way he's played and everything like that. Yeah. It's just really upsetting that nobody decided to throw a little flower in his hair. Yeah. Or something. Do something to make him a little, a little older. Yeah, that is one thing. And, you make know, it goes back to the source. at this point in filming. Yeah, like there's yeah. Goes, you can not age him significantly like you can now, but you could certainly age him. And they didn't bother. That's upsetting. Yeah. yeah, there's there's something, and it certainly goes back to the source. And you know, I mentioned earlier how uh, how step families in, and you know, it's 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 greater than Dickens. You know, it's other literature of the time, which suggests a certain truth to it. Well, but yeah, we've got like um, yeah, you know, we and, and not even yeah. just at the time, and we have like. Yeah. Uh, well, the the evil Cinderella is always like that, always yeah. in, in old, but but there's there's this very explicit idea in in Victorian literature of you know you were my sister's son and you were you know obviously here it's you're my little brother but you were the responsibility of taking care of you was, was forced upon, upon me yeah. and and therefore I don't really have to care about you which because is because you're not you're not actually weird. my kid you're like, not actually my kid. And it's a weird thing a little bit for me, okay? Yeah. Because coming from an anthropological background, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's not what I would consider a natural response. It is natural yeah. to feel resentment as far as I can tell about – because I've never been in this situation. But yeah. you when you share a genetic heritage with a person, there is a certain affinity, especially if it's brother and sister. Yeah. It's yeah. really hard I, to believe. It the feels, hate. it feels, yeah, slightly less believable. And you know, she's she's mad about her situation in life. Oh, I had to marry a blacksmith. Who seems like I a was, lovely man, by the way. Yeah, Joe's Joe's a great guy. Joe's a fun guy. He's a good character. He's a kind person. And you yeah, know, he's seems a blacksmith. like a, he can, and, and he a blacksmith can make is, you stuff. Well, and a blacksmith at this time not as good of a catch as it would have been 200, 300 years before. <laughs> But, yeah. like, obviously he's still very well employed. He can buy yeah. a new suit when he goes to the city. Yeah. I do I do like that, uh, you know, when when we first meet the Pockets, uh, Havisham's uh, extended family, um, they, uh, they are just these terrible people out for her <laughs> money, waiting for her to die. And, you know, we first meet Herbert when he's young, um, and he immediately gets Pip into a fight. Yeah, I like him because I thought it was a girl. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the like voice a... is so high pitched. When you I was first like, is this so? And then I was, then, then there was people. no shirt, and I was like, oh, it's a boy. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> we like, get a what? Oh, oh wait, does does Estella have a? Is she always wearing a wig? Is yeah, I I was like, is, is, is that disguise. girl gonna take her? Oh my god! Oh wait, no, never mind. <laughs> no, no, that's a guy. That's a boy. No, sort of. He's played as Alec Guinness as an adult. And uh, it's one of Alec Guinness's breakout roles too, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's such it's such a young Alec Guinness that you can't really tell it's Alec Guinness. Mm. It's yeah, but uh, but yeah, he's 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 such you know because he starts off he starts off you know in that way, and we see where he comes from. But he's such a sympathetic character, and he goes along with the plan whole hog. Uh, when we get to uh, yeah, you end up helping. liking him. He's a likable yeah, guy, and even likable. as a he's child, he's kind of likable because he doesn't turn all nasty about it. Like he got in a fight and he lost the fight, and it's that's the end of it. There's no hard feelings. He of course he claims later that he beat the hell out of a pip, but yes, whatever, yes, he does. it's he fine. Does. Everybody's memories are changeable. Well, the callback to that when they're when they're having their little. Uh, their boxing lessons. Yeah, and, and then he, yeah, he apologizes. He, he apologizes before he he takes the uh, 
takes the inn that has always been the inn whenever this guy's in a fight. Yeah. So he tries to he tries to go a big hook and ends up spinning and then gets punched in the face. <laughs> Oops. And it's a great moment of comedy. And, yeah, and and, 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 and and when they meet each other for the first time later on, the yeah. second time they meet each other for the first time, basically. And they yeah. reference back to it, and it's just, it's funny. It's nice. Yeah, it's funny. And it makes this yeah, character it, kind of instantaneously likable, in a weird way. So Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, but, but women, women are never treated well in, in Dickens, <laughs> unless, oh, unless they need to terrible. be. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Biddy's, Biddy's all right. Yes. Biddy, Biddy seems like a lovely woman. Yeah. Biddy, uh, Biddy, we don't, we don't know enough. And you know, Biddy in the novels. We get we get a little more about Biddy in the novel. Um, but uh, you know, she's she's lovely. But she's, in this she's film, nice. because she's a but, but in this film where yeah. almost every woman otherwise is yeah. something horrible about her, Biddy yeah. comes off quite nice because she's the only not yeah. bad woman in the film. Yeah, she's she's middle of the road, but she's so. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's so, all subjective, right? Yeah, you know, Mrs. Joe. Mrs. Joe hates her life because of what what has happened, and to a certain extent, Pip is to blame for that. So she takes it out on him. Um, you know, everybody's everybody's responding to their situation, but they're responding so poorly. Yeah, um, it's like everybody so, is. Yeah, it is yeah, in a certain so, way a caricature of human behavior, yeah, in that like everybody yeah. reacts sort of extremely. Yeah. Down to Mad Witch and everyone. Everybody yeah. reacts yeah. extremely to their situation. Like, yeah. absurdly extreme. Yeah. Havisham, Havisham, she, uh, you know, she had her heart broken, so uh, she's out to get revenge. Right, and she everyone. lives in the house and has never touched yeah. anything since that day. Yeah. And... So she doesn't leave. Uh, she, she lives in the dark, and she raises this beautiful young girl to uh, break, hearts. break men's hearts. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all she's out. And Estella... Estella, uh, she rec- she recognizes, you know, that she's just being used in that plot. But at the same time, she's she's. But she's also so in a situation where there's nothing she can yeah. do about it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And... she can't do anything about it. So she's she's part of it, and she recognizes that it's broken her as a person. But, you know, she's. She believes that it's her, uh, her lot as well. It's it's what she plays. So, you know, everybody kind of, everybody could fix how they act. Yeah, a lot of this could be better. Yeah. But again, like, I, yeah, I think this is just a, you need your characters to be yeah. almost over the top in their behavior. And we get that. I mean, like, we get that even down to the good characters. We got Magwitch, who severely overreacts to, like, the way Pip helps him after being threatened. Mind you. Yeah. Like, Pip is, yeah. does it because he is scared. Yes. Um, and Magwitch reacts by basically making him his son and taking care yeah. of from him from afar. And I mean, even those are overreactions. Um, but, yeah, otherwise we would have a lot of very subtle characters that maybe wouldn't move the story along quick enough. So, it's fine. Uh, and it, I think it's pretty true probably to Dickens anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Dickens, Dickens, to a certain extent, you know, he, he his villains were very bad, and everybody everybody's names mean something. Yes, pockets are after money. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, everybody's yeah. name is. <laughs> oh, Dickens! Oh, Dickens! <laughs> he had a lot of interesting issues. But yeah, yeah Magwitch, actually, when I Magwitch finished watching this, one of the things that pops yeah. up is like a biography of Dickens, and I was like, man, maybe I should just yeah. watch this instead. No, no, no. I meant like after, you know, yeah. afterwards, like yeah. instead of like doing yeah. some other stuff, like maybe I should yeah. just start watching the, Dick- the biography <laughs> and find out what made this man so weird. Yeah, but Magwitch is well, society made him weird. He he was out to break all the social. Rules. Well, I was reading okay. like I read I read the synopsis of the autobiography or not autobiography. I read the synopsis yeah. of, the, of the biopic, right? And yeah. um, it would seem that he went through a situation where, like, he was forced to drop out of school. And, yeah. yeah. I didn't know. I don't know anything about his history except for what I just read in that synopsis. So, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it weird that we spend so much time in, in school 
learning about the great works, but never about the authors of the great works. Yeah, it is weird. And you know, in a case like you know, Dickens, it would seem to be very significant why he actually wrote the, these books yeah. the way he wrote them. You know, and with our with our high school English class, they kind of they they gloss over a lot of that, and then tried to make us learn on our own for that final that final project was all about. Oh well, why does this book exist in yeah, the society it existed? Yeah. And uh, what? It's really, how is it a response? But it's also screwed up because then we only know about the one book and the one author. Like yeah. I know way yes, exactly. too much about Jonathan Swift. Yes, and no one else. You can never, you can never know too much about. Jonathan no, you can't. Swift. Actually, I made a really good choice, but <laughs> uh, for my project, but uh, <laughs> and I still one of my favorite books of all time. Um, but yeah. The point, yeah, it's weird. It's weird that I don't know anything yeah. about Dickens except for what I just read in a synopsis on Netflix. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, that one episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, obviously, you know, we, we mentioned the cinematographer, uh, the cinematography one. Um, there's a lot of great shots. Uh, the undercarriage of the horses. Mm. Uh, we see the horses' yeah. feet, and then that's superimposed over, over the camera moving over a map. Very, very Indiana Jones. Yeah, right. Very, yeah, very pulp. Um, we get uh, after uh, after Pip is with Magwitch when he dies. Uh, there's an extended scene of him, <clears throat> you know, kind of getting dizzy. Yeah, falling with ill. All that emotion. Yeah, I, falling ill. I actually and, had to uh, rewind for, that and watch that again because yeah. I was like, "Why is he suddenly falling down? What's going on?" Yeah. And then I just realized then, that, oh, he's just getting sick, and we need to show that yeah. visually without wasting yeah. a lot of time. And they, and they do that visually by popping into first-person view. Yeah, it's really uh, weird. And, and do a shaky cam. And, and there's, there's lights just, and know, stuff, and there's superimposed and images from multiple scenes really, over top of each other. Yeah. It's real weird. And then he just falls into a bed. Still, well, in I don't even know if he makes view, it, because it looks like he bed. falls Almost into the bed. It looks like he misses. <laughs> Maybe, but yeah. I read it as, oh man, he just slammed his head on the yeah. floor. Um, and and then we wake up still in the first person, month later. With Joe. And it's just Joe's face. And the, I, it's <laughs> great. Like, once I rewound it and figured yeah. out what was going on, like, why did we... Yeah. It was like, like, actually, once I watched the scene with Joe and then went back and was like... Once I, It's a scene I had to rewind. I, there's no way around yeah. it. I don't imagine that, the, unless you've read the book, I don't know if that happens in the book. Um, I, I I think he does. I, well, I, I, yeah, I, but like you know, what the I, ending of the book is less clear. Yeah, in the beginning, not the right? last few um, pages, but the uh, the there's there's a good chunk in the third act. I'm not really clear what happened on. I I, I just don't remember. I don't. Yeah, and I think uh, the third act might have been the only part I read. Yeah. Instead of just like looking up information about. <laughs> and I still am a little unclear about like what happened. But the point is, is that um. It once you know what's going on, it's quite good. Yeah, it even makes yeah. the audience a little bit sick. Yes, but you know, at the same time, that's that's that's, that's good that's too. Thing. No, know, I'm, I'm not it, saying it's it, a bad it, thing. It, I, it, you definitely understand you to when characters. he wakes up with Joe. Oh, he was sick. Yeah, yeah, and he was sick for a few months from the uh, <laughs> yeah yeah from the description we get. And, yeah, he was it's great because he was out for a while. Yeah, but it's yeah. April. Um, it's the end of April, Bib. <laughs> the end of April. I don't know when. Uh, I don't. But we know don't when know what time. Ill, yeah, we don't know <laughs> we, any we other really, date. So it's sort of like so nebulous. Yeah. He says. He says to Stella later that uh, you know he doesn't know about whatever whatever she's alluding to about her husband. He doesn't know about it because he's been ill for a while. But <laughs> he doesn't. I he's still, know, don't I get... watched the movie. Theoretically, read the end of the book. Yes. What happens to her husband? He did she get married to him? Because uh, she marries. About his she marries that guy. Right. Everybody hits. She right. she marries that guy. Everybody hits. Right. And he uh, in the in the original marriage. end. Yeah, yeah. In the movie, I'm sorry. Right. This is this is one difference um, between the between the endings. Um, in the novel, she marries him and he dies. Okay. In the original, she marries him, he dies, and she marries someone else. And Pip Pip runs into her on the street. Um, as you know, she's with her second husband. Uh, in the in the changed ending, she marries that jerk, uh, and he just dies. Um, and you know, it's kind of this comeuppance that uh, you know she uh, she she was a jerk, and then she ends up marrying a jerk. Um, but uh, 
you know. But then in the book here, or in the in the movie here, uh, she didn't marry him because when we find out, you know, the, when we finally finally point out that she's Magwitch's daughter, um, he's no longer. We, uh, yeah, he that comes to light, and the guy the guy is no longer interested. Um, which is weird that that came to light. I think that's kind of a that's a pretty major change. Because, you know, even even within the movie, uh, Jaggers is very, very explicit that this can never be. Yeah, it's weird. I I wondered about that when I was watching it. I was like, yeah. he's not going to, he didn't want to tell her or anybody. So yeah. how did, so it's got to be yeah. that, I don't know. I don't it, know how it happened. I mean, it's said in a way that maybe she still doesn't know, but just the fact that she was adopted and not not oh, in line yeah. to actually to actually necessarily inherit Did Havish and money. Did adoption not exist in Victorian England? That's a real question yeah. right now. Like, was it impossible to take somebody as your own child? Well, it, no. It's it certainly was possible because that's what that's what uh, you know all of our twists is about an orphanage and everyone trying to get adopted. Right, so, right. But that, it's you know. like what I'm saying is from a legal standpoint, is it impossible to? <laughs> I really don't know because it seems like it isn't in this film. Well, and in this in this with story. Uh, with with Magwitch, I think the problem was that he didn't necessarily have a will, and since since well, his, also he's a convict, you know, he was a, so his will and is he was kind a of convict. Void. Yeah, and it was, and he's a convict, so you know him him not having blood relations meant that his property was wielded to uh, for reparations to to uh, whatever he did. Um, whereas, I don't know. I, I, it's it's kind of unclear, you know. Because Stella what... lives with, um, Havisham for, yeah. like, her entire life. Yeah. So it's kind of like she's not at all connected? Or, or is it because this is a modified ending that they just needed it to yeah. work? And so they're like, oh, she never, she's not actually adopted. She's just... Yeah, it would Adopted. it would seem like she should she should have some of that money, even though the pockets are arguing about who gets the money. So you know, um, maybe maybe not. I don't know. That's weird. Maybe it's not, or maybe, maybe like not always, parent. blood relatives take who knows take precedence over maybe blood relatives take precedence. Maybe it's maybe that's why everybody hates stepchildren because adopted kids really don't have any standing. At all. Yeah, it's all very maybe. weird, and, and and I understand why they did the ending. The yeah. way they did it for the film, because you just need it to be finished. Yeah, you need you need a really easy sort Although, of slide to into. Be fair, oh, they work together. Her husband dying, you could have still totally had the ending you had. Yeah, yeah, that works. That works same way. Yeah, you know, it's it's a difference though, since we don't see her and that guy interacting. We know he's a jerk, but we don't know how much of a jerk he is. So if they had gotten married and she died, that's that's a sort of tragedy in the loss, not in the tragedy in the living. Right. Where, right. Yeah. So we don't. Where get if a real she's good feeling if it, she's you know. yeah if she's spurned, then we know he's automatically is, a jerk and that she's yeah okay yeah yeah. Then it's just you know it's the exact same thing as her her being her spurning Pip the entire time, you know. Then it's then it's her getting a taste of her own medicine, very explicitly and very concretely and very concisely that's true yeah um, that, i guess it does work that because i mean the ending plays out fine you're i'm fine with the yeah. ending in the film yeah um it's a little bit a little bit overly sappy for me my taste yeah. it's like wow that worked out great for yeah. everybody you know it's a it's a very convenient ending but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't com- I can't complain about no, it. No, I can't. I, I did not like it. I just it it is very yeah. like oh wow everything worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's really great the way uh, you know the way it ends with him pulling down the yeah the I like that that's a great off that's that. great yeah. and like all and the light lighting. comes in and the room is just atrocious. Yeah. And it's yeah. really interesting because the light. Even for us, the viewers, the light does dramatically change the room. Like we see, that yeah. this room is yeah. even more awful than it looked like yeah. in the. Dark. We already know. We already know. There's awful, awful things about the room. We've seen the Bible covered in, in 
cobwebs. Right. Um, but now we see, like, the chandeliers are, like, nothing but cobwebs. And then, like, yeah. just, it's awful. The room is just a million times worse yeah. than we thought it was. Yeah. The set dressing, the set dressing of that house is... Great. Uh, that should have won an yeah. Academy Award. That <laughs> just... It, it is, yeah. That, that room, when you see it in full light, is like, <laughs> yeah. wow, somebody spent a yeah. lot of time making this room <laughs> as awful thought. as possible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah, it's really great there. And, you know, it's, and that does bring up one, you know, it's something you have to do for a movie. But uh, some of the times when, when they were in Havisham's home, uh, walking around with the candles, the way the lighting worked, you know, they, they just kind of uh, had a spot come up as people walked around a corner um, to signify that that was the light from the candle, even though that candle clearly didn't didn't light them the way yeah, yeah. that they were being we get, lit. I mean... I don't think cinematography is at a point, and the cameras are at a point at, the, at this time, to we could to yeah. use just basically candlelight. Well, even even you, now, you, you can, can use just the candle. Well, you, you can make you'd it have to fully light it, like yeah. only candlelight. Yeah, you'd you'd artificially darken everything from a lighted position. Then yeah, I, know, I, I, and we're just not in a position to do that at this time. And, yeah, and so it's maybe we're not. So it, it, yeah, yeah, you get a very light so that was. That was the one little thing. If I tried to find a complaint, that yeah, would be but it's, it. it's but, uh, you know, I I would definitely say for me, Joe not aging is more of a thing. Yeah, where like Joe not aging could, is definitely you a could have made him a little bit older looking. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. And you know, uh, at the same time, Biddy doesn't really age either. But, that's but we meet upsetting. her so late yeah. that it's not as much of a problem. You know, even though even though we meet her while Pip is still young, before we you know. It uh, it doesn't seem as much. Yeah, and it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, she's just not as upsetting. Yeah. It and uh, Mrs. Havisham is not so upsetting because she's already a crazy old woman. So like, yeah, she's, she's already crazy old, so she can be as old as she right, wants to be. She's reached that 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 like kind of terminal point where like at this point she can't get any older than she is at least for in cinema world. Like she's as old as yeah. a person can be already. All right. So yeah, I like the deaf grandpa. He's a great character. <laughs> that was such a it was great... so much a wonderful oh, what scene. Is... Like everybody's nodding at him. Oh, I loved it. What is his name? Wiggum? Wiggum? Uh, no, it's not like Wiggum. That. That's the chief. Yeah, but I can deal with that. Wimmick. Wimmick. Wimmick, Wimmick is his name. Yeah, they're they're with in, Wimmick's in the, father. And Wimmick's already they call, like an old him guy. P. After, after calling him yes, Agent, Agent P. for a while, let's start calling him Agent P. Yeah, he shortens it to Agent P. That's his nickname yeah, for his, what the hell for his is old that dad. For his dad. He's Agent P. I, mean, you I can't kind of want to call my just... dad that when he gets older. <laughs> hey, Agent no, P. Just, just nod at him every so often. He likes <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, right? Make him feel involved. Oh, yeah. it was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Wemmick, Wemmick's a great yeah. character, too. I mean, they're all, they're all, I, they're all I, great I, characters yeah, no, in their no, own way. There's not really any bad acting. You know? The characters are all yeah. good. Yeah, Every, everybody's a great actor. Yeah. Everybody in Yeah, I mean, the, really the, the, the lawyer is very much, <laughs> like, a good actor. Yeah. He does a great job of being a lawyer. Uh, um, Matt, um, what's his name? Matt, I keep wanting to call him Manwich. Magwitch. Yeah, Magwitch You're... is, does yeah. a good job. He's very intimidating. I like his making uh, uh, Mr. Pocket swear, I can't remember Mr. Pocket's first name, swear <laughs> on, a, on, I guess, a small Bible. Uh, yeah, yeah. I assume it was a small we don't Bible. See it, so. it doesn't make sense if it wasn't. No, it doesn't. But, but you know, I I have yeah. to assume because I didn't actually see it. Um, yeah, I think that's really fun, yeah. fascinating. I yeah, yeah, fascinating. Good job, good job, all. Fascinating, fascinating. Everyone involved. This no, this movie really. It's you know, it's routinely listed on top British film lists, and it it, and it absolutely deserves this position. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, it's 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 in that area where I wouldn't necessarily put it in, you know, favorite movies that we've no, seen so far. I it's not a um, movie that I'm going to purposely go out and watch again, but it certainly yeah. was a good film. Yeah, it's certainly it's certainly significantly better. You know, if we if we view <laughs> all things relevant to you know, some other. <laughs> well, we can't we can't do that. But even even viewing other uh, movies that we've oh, seen yeah, that have been listed that have been listed on you know greatest movies ever lists for right. like in whatever context. Beauty and the Beast that look like shoddy craftsmanship. It yeah. makes 
yeah. yeah, it's it's a very well done film mm-hmm. that's enjoyable yeah. to watch. It's not too terribly long considering its source material. Yeah. Um, yeah. It gets a little slow at some points. I zoned out a little bit, but not yeah. for terribly long at but any given a, time. Given its source material, there's a lot to yeah. cover. Right, so. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Considering that, yeah. yeah, an actual like scene for scene adaptation would be like a four DVD box set. <laughs> yes. This is be. great. And it does not move yeah. too terribly slow. In fact, I mean, like, I was able to watch the whole thing without falling asleep, which I'm not sure I can say about the one we watched in AP English. Yes. Yes. I fell asleep a lot in AP yeah, English. So we all I just, did. You know what, though? You know what, though? The uh, the teacher, she thought I fell asleep more than I did fall asleep. You know, the only but thing I think when, I ever paid attention to is, man, I the importance of being earnest. That's it. It's the a only thing story. I paid attention it's a to because it's the only time yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is really great." Yeah, no, well, I, well, I was a great uh, great writer too. Um, anyway, a very sorry, yeah, writer no, than... I, a total yeah. non sequitur. Sorry. Yes, thank you for that non sequitur, and we'll yeah, end on that. That's a good way to end. Yeah, come back next time. We're watching another David Lean Dickens adaptation, yeah, Oliver uh, Twist, as I said, uh, Oliver Twist. So that'll be. Uh, That'll be interesting, too. We'll see how that goes, and we'll probably have nearly identical conversation. Probably, which is uh, going to be a little bit odd. I I don't know why yeah. they, they seem to match these things up in this Criterion collection like this. And Yeah, the way the, way the spine numbers yeah, were. You know, it, and they're not even the release numbers, which is weird. So I don't even – I need to figure out why they spine them like that. But yeah. anyway, that's that's something we don't yeah, need to no, talk about here. Not. And uh not. Sorry. Come back next time. Come back next time for Oliver Twist, and uh, we'll see you again. See you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.